In this session, we will learn about shortcut method to draw shear force and bending moment diagram. The first step in drawing shear force and bending moment diagram is to find unknown support reactions. Once we have the unknown support reactions, we draw diagram of beam with all the external forces and support reactions. And once we have that diagram, we look for vertical or forces which are perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Now for different segments of the beam, we may have different situations and depending on those situations, the variation in shear force diagram will be different. So if there are no forces perpendicular to the axis of the beam for a segment, then there will be no change in shear force diagram for that segment. If there is a concentrated force on the segment of beam, then there will be a jump in shear force diagram. The direction of jump will be in the direction of concentrated force and the magnitude of jump will be equal to magnitude of concentrated force. So let's see this by an example. So I have segment of the beam and there is a concentrated force of magnitude P kilonewton. So the shear force diagram for this segment will be there will be a jump in shear force diagram at this point. So say shear force diagram is constant up to this point. At this point there will be a jump. The magnitude of the jump will be P kilonewton and after that my diagram will continue like this. So at the location of concentrated force there is a jump equals to magnitude of that concentrated force. If there is uniformly distributed load over a segment then over that segment shear force diagram will change linearly and the rate of change will be equals to magnitude of UDL and the change will be in the direction of the UDL. So let's look at segment of a beam on which uniformly distributed load is acting. So we have a segment of the beam and on this segment we have a UDL of magnitude W kilonewton per meter over a distance t. So shear force diagram for this segment will be so up to this segment shear force diagram will be constant from the first point of UDL the shear force diagram will start changing and because this UDL is in downward direction the change will be in the downward direction that is the shear force will decrease the rate of decrease will be w kilonewton per meter so over the length d the total change in shear force will be w into d so it will come down by amount w into d kilonewton and beyond that my shear force diagram will be constant so for a uniformly distributed load, the shear force diagram will change linearly. The rate of change will be equals to the magnitude of UDL and the total change in the shear force diagram will be equals to total magnitude of UDL. Next is triangular load. In the case of triangular load, the change in shear force diagram will be parabolic the direction of change will be the direction of triangular load and the slope of shear force diagram will be steep where the magnitude of triangular load is higher. So for example if we consider a segment of beam sorry so let's consider segment of beam
and I will show two types of triangular loads first one is increasing load and second one a decreasing load and both the loads are acting in downward direction so if I draw shear force diagram for this segment of the beam this is the segment over which we want to focus on so for the first half of the triangular load the triangular load is in downward direction and the magnitude of triangular load increases from 0 to the maximum value so on the left end of the triangular load the slope will be mild and at the right end of the triangular load the slope of shear force curve will be very steep now and we also know that the shape will be parabolic and because triangular load is in downward direction it will be decreasing so we may have two ways we, we, we may have two ways in which a parabolic curve will decrease first is like this and second is like this in both the cases the curve is decreasing but if we look at the slope the slope is steep here and slope is mild here for the first curve and slope is mild here and slope is steep here for this curve so for the blue portion of the triangular load we will have this graph because on the left end we have mild slope on the right end we have steep slope so the graph or the curve for shear force diagram will be something like this for the green portion of triangular load because on the left end we have high magnitude of triangular load so we will have steep slope at that end and for the right end of green triangular load we have zero load so the slope will be very mild so we will have this curve for shear force diagram so I will continue like this so we have seen how shear force diagram will change for two different types of triangular loads next comes drawing bending moment diagram bending moment diagram can be drawn from shear force diagram and to draw bending moment diagram we use the relationship between bending moment and shear force and that relationship is given by dm by dx equals to v which we can write like dm equals to v dx and if we integrate on both sides say from two ends of a segment then we get x1 x2 v dx so here what we are doing is we are considering a segment of our beam this is end 1 this is end 2 the value of x here is x1 value of x here is x2 so I am integrating my dm from point 1 to point 2 for which values of x are x1 to x2 v dx so this I can write as m2 minus m1 equals to integral x1 to x2 v dx this in words I can write change in bending moment from 1 to 2 and that will be equals to area under SFD between x1 and x2 so what I have done is I have integrated my shear force diagram to obtain 
change in bending moment diagram and the area of shear force diagram between segment between points x1 and x2 will give me change in bending moment from point x1 to point x2. Now there are several cases for different types of variations in shear force diagram. If shear force diagram is zero between x1 and x2, then bending moment diagram will be constant from x1 to x2. Next is if shear force diagram is constant between x1 and x2, then bending moment diagram will increase linearly from x1 to x2. Third is if shear force diagram is linear between x1 and x2, then bending moment diagram will be parabolic from x1 to x2. And like the shear force diagram, slope will be steeper for higher magnitude of shear force diagram. And last point is if there is a point moment acting at any point on the beam, then there will be a jump in bending moment diagram and jump will be equals to magnitude of point moment and slope wise moment will be considered or treated positive that is there will be a positive jump or jump in upward direction for clockwise moment.